All right. Thanks for joining, everyone. Uh, this, my name is Davin Cook. I'm the Business Development Manager here at Glue. And today I have a very special guest. I have uh, Anne Catherine Freeberg from BioID. Say hi, Anne Catherine. Hi, everyone. So nice to be here. Fantastic. And BioID has been a longstanding partner of ours. And uh, frankly, we use BioID every single day um, to get into our Glue server. And uh, today we wanted to talk a little bit about some new things that are coming out of BioID, but also to let you know that the BioID capability will be included in Glue Solo. So Glue Solo is our digital identity platform that we'll or have launched uh, by this video, by the time this video airs, and it will include uh, pre-configured uh, bio ID so that you too can also take advantage of facial recognition technology uh, when uh, with your single sign-on offering. So, and Catherine, what can you tell us a little bit about uh, the service that we're using today? Yeah, sure. So, um, as you said, the BioID is a longstanding partner of Glue, and we've been on the market for more than 20 years, and we're offering biometrics as a service, which we were the first ones to do, actually, um, a few years ago. And so this means that authentication in the cloud is possible using facial and periocular recognition. And for unsupervised situations, of course, liveness detection is really important. That's why we also have proprietary liveness detection that has been ISO certified and um, yeah, has a specialty in security, of course. And so we are enabling trustworthy, almost face-to-face -face interactions in the online world, including identity verification and authentication with biometrics. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, again, we use this every day and, uh, you know, I'll... Uh... I'll be pleased to provide a little bit of a, of a demo on, on how Glue uses this. Um, this is our login to CASA, which is our MFA um, user um, portal or self-management portal, which allows you to uh, bind and couple um, various MFA technologies. We here believe at Glue that if you're going to fly solo, you should have a choice of MFA technologies. And of course, that includes facial recognition from BioID. So if I go ahead and log in, just using a username and password, or this could be passwordless. There we go. So I'm um, prompted for two-step verification, which in my case is super glue, but oh no, it looks like I forgot my, um, my phone at home and I don't have access to super glue. So let me try another way to log in. Um, so again, we have the option of bio ID and I haven't been able to forget my face for as long as I can remember. So let's go ahead and log in using bio ID. So it's gonna ask me to look at my laptop camera and I just move my head a little bit for liveness detection to ensure that I'm real and not a picture or a video. And it takes uh, four pictures in our setup. And then it should verify that uh, it, I am who I say I am and log me straight into the, the CASA application. And you can see that within CASA, uh, we also have a re-enrollment um, uh, capability here so that uh, if something changes on your face, uh, you've lost weight over uh, the holidays, uh, hopefully you can re-enroll again. So with that, I'll uh, go back to my slides because we did want to talk a little bit about um, what you've done more recently and Catherine at, um, at BioID and introduce something called Photo Verify. So what can you tell us about Photo Verify? So Photo Verify is a service that is able to do identity verification. And the nice thing is that we combine face matching with liveness detection for ID ownership verification. So if you want to make sure someone actually owns an ID, but you don't want to ask them to go to a branch for the identity verification or do a full video ident process, which is cumbersome, Mm -hmm. um, you can use automated services like Photo Verify. So you would send a few images, including one of the ID and two of the live person. And then we can say that the person was actually really there during the digital identity verification and that it's that the person is the owner of the identity document. And this can happen without manual inspection, so without a human having to interfere or check this process. And so this enables a lot of efficiency in various processes, like I said, online onboarding for new bank accounts, for instance, or also password reset. Um, so if you need to reset your password after holidays, just as we are right now, um, which can of course happen, 
then it's nice if you don't have to go to your administrator in person, but you can do that by um, verifying your identity with your identity document or with a database, for instance, an employee database. So you would just have a comparison of your live image and the employee database picture that is stored for you. And then your company knows it's actually you who is requesting a new password. Fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, that's very interesting, especially now with a lot of work from home. Many employees don't even step through the uh, the, the door anymore. And many, many yeah. businesses are, are moving to uh, remote only work, which we're we're happy for. So with that, I'm going to hand this back over to you. Do you think you could do a little demo for us today? Sure, that should be a good idea to show how the process works. I will shortly turn off my camera for that. Okay, so what you see now is the BioID Playground. It's something like our sandbox platform where everyone can test biometrics. And I will sign in just like Devin did um, onto the BioID Playground. Using my face as well as my password. So this was multi-factor, which is good for security, of course. It's absolutely necessary, I think. And what you can see here um, are the different demos that we have. We have a liveness detection demo, photo verify, and others. And what I will show now, of course, is the photo verify one, because this is what we're speaking about today. Um, the two steps involved, I already mentioned them before, are that an ID document is sent, an identity document is um, sent, and live images are sent to us in order to make sure that the person is really there and that the person is the owner of the identity document. So what you can see here um, are the two steps that result in three images. Those three images are then analyzed by our BioID web service. And I will show you um, how this looks by first uploading a picture of my ID. So I already took those beforehand. Um, I will just choose one. And you can see you don't need to send any identity information like your name and so on, um, because we are only analyzing the biometric part. So this is very important for privacy. And so this is the identity document. Then I will just take two selfies. I clicked once and then the second selfie was taken automatically because I moved. So we have a motion analysis in this. And then those three selfies are, are now compared. Um, first of all, to make sure the person is really there, that I was live when I was taking the pictures and not mm -hmm. presenting some type of fake. And then of course, also if I am the same person as on the ID. So I will um, ask our web service to perform this operation. And you can see that what has happened in the background um, was a success. So our result says that we have a match on level five. We have five different levels for photo verify. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the security level you need. So the level five is the highest and strictest security level with an, a false acceptance rate of 0.001%. And um, well, yeah, so I was really there, which you saw, and right. I'm also the owner of this identity document. This is what the result says. Um, I decided to just show you what would happen if I'm using an image instead of my live face. So I will redo this uh, using a picture. So it's still me, you can see that, but the liveness detection will fail because um, this was an image, it's a 2D thing and not a 3D. And it's also not the skin texture that we can analyze. And so you can see here, oops, ID ownership could not be verified. And the reason is that the images were not recorded from a live person. Now, if I do live selfies, but take a different identity document, for instance, or I'm not taking a different identity document, I would just use a different lady. She, she looks maybe a bit similar to me. I hope I was trying to find someone. Um, and now I ask the system to perform the same thing. It says, oops, ID ownership could not be verified. But this time, the reason is not liveness detection. This time, the reason is it's not the same person. So this identity uh, could not be confirmed. 
And I, you can see this is not an identity document, but it doesn't matter for this use case. We just need to be sure that we're comparing two faces. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can send an identity document, but you can also do the comparison with other pictures, of course. Yeah, and um, I also for the liveness detection, I think this is a very important fraud prevention um, mechanism. So I decided to, to show you another time um, using my own document again, but a video in this case, which is more sophisticated, of course, than a picture. And I will ask the system to perform the same test again. And again, as you see, live detection has failed. So the two different steps are, will always have to be successful, of course, for us to accept an ID ownership verification. As you see, this happens in real time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, as I said, no manual inspection has to take place at this, um, in this process. This is fully automated and happens in the cloud. Yeah, that's amazing. It's very clever, you know, and honestly, uh, we don't need to understand how the technology works or how you're able to do this. The fact that, you know, the technology is so easy to use, I think is one of one of the, the best aspects of it. And of course, uh, there's a score assigned the false acceptance rate so that a organization can make a determination whether another form of identification needs to be provided uh, during um, during enrollment or, or login. So this is, yeah, sure. uh, is you can, fantastic. You can also do something like a step up authentication. For mm -hmm. instance, if you only reach level two or three, you can ask right. the employee or the person to do another form of authentication as well. And right. what I actually forgot to show you is that I also have, um, oh no, I don't, yeah, here. I have an image of mine when I was 18. So I do like look a bit different. Um, it's been more than 10 years since then. And we will try the verification as well. And you can see it still verifies me on level five. So even, um, yeah, a lot of years have gone by and I wear glasses now. I didn't wear those uh, on, the, on the image. The system is very robust and is able to verify people even if they changed or even if they aged, which is normal because identity documents are issued and then normally have a validity of five to 10 years. And so our system is able to cope with this as well. Right. And anyone can try this on your website. Is that true? Yep, you can go to the BioID Playground and just register for free, and then you can test um, as much as you want. As I said, you can right. also test our liveness detection, so the fraud prevention part is here alone, and our normal verification, which is what you saw for Glue Solo, or for the login you just, uh, you just performed, this was verification, so you can, of course, try our biometrics there. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, I invite people to go to the bioid.com and, and, and try this and and uh, see if they can fail it. it uh, <laughs> I, I happen to know that uh, I can't, so uh, it knows uh, really who I am. So with that, let me just uh, share my screen again. And um, let's get to some uh, questions for, uh, for Anne Catherine. So, uh, so you see here, and share screen and screen two. Okay. All right. So this comes to the end of our uh, of our little presentation. But I did have a few questions for you before we go. Um, so what do you think is the advantage of using Photo Verify for sort of in an eKYC know your customer um, mm -hmm. environment? I think if you compare the process of doing identity verification in a manual way to this automated solution. Mm -hmm. uh, a de a definitely um, an advantage is the, the time and the efficiency. You have the availability 24 seven, instead of having to go to a branch. So from a company's point of view, of course, it's very cost efficient. And from a user's point of view, it's very quick and easy to do. So um, I think today everyone expects to be able to open a bank account 24 seven and not just during office hours. Right. And then of course we have COVID. So a lot of services have moved online like um, government services for instance, but you really want to be sure whom you interact with online. And that's why this um, digital identity verification is a crucial step. And it's important to do it in a secure way. And that's why biometrics are a very good way to bind your identity document to the person who's actually submitting it. 
Okay, yeah, and you've mentioned a number of use cases. Clearly, government, it makes a lot of sense uh, where there's a photo ID issued and then there needs to be some form of verification. Uh, we've talked about onboarding a little bit. Are there any other use cases that, uh, that this is ideally suited for? Yeah, I think what's also very interesting for Glue Solo for companies um, mm -hmm. is the password reset or account recovery scenario. We right. know that IT administration is a very costly process that people mm -hmm. actually forget their passwords very often. And it's also kind of the weak link, the password reset scenario that is in place for many companies. Mm -hmm. It's the weak link because it's so easy to exploit. Right. Um, you just need to pretend you are the one who wants a new password and then you have it and, and you can um, access accounts. So I think password reset is a very good use case as well. Mm -hmm. You can do that in different scenarios, like for, like I already mentioned, if you have an employee data, database or also a governmental database from the citizens, then you can use this as um, a comparison instead of asking the user to take a picture of the identity document, you could ask the person to um, enter their employee number, for instance, then the picture would be retrieved from the database. And then you ask the person to take a live selfie. And this live selfie is compared to the database one. And then you can be sure that it's your employee asking for a new password. And the same for, as I said, citizenship um, databases, you can do the same. And I think a very broad application, of course, is KYC, know your customer right. um, for, for banks, for insurances. They really need to be sure about the legal identity of the user they're interacting with. And yeah, so this is a, a very good use case, like opening new bank accounts or filing an insurance case and so on. Yeah. And for workforce, I, I think I perceive that for step up authentication or for privileged account management, if uh, someone's allowed or has to be given temporary access to something, this is a way to ensure that there's no man in the middle or that the person really is who they say they are um, with mm -hmm. that extra level of assurity, especially if these, if the data is, uh, is sensitive to the organization. So yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so how do you prevent fraud when using Photo Verify? Mm -hmm. uh, there are two different elements, of course. One of mm -hmm. them is the face matching part. So we have mm -hmm. a very accurate face matching algorithm that is proprietary and built by BioID here in Germany. Mm -hmm. And so we make sure that um, the person actually is who they pretend to be um, or who they say they are on their identity document through very accurate um, biometric matching. And then the other step is the liveness detection. So liveness detection um, can be done in very different ways, but it generally says you want to make sure the user is present and no fraud is taking place through replay attacks, through deep fakes, for instance, for videos, masks. And so we need to be sure that nothing is presented to the camera that is uh, just imitating the biometrics of the person. So we really want to be sure the person is actually there. And that's what we do with our liveness detection. And it's um, very interesting how, um, how you can do that. We have two different steps. One, one part is, is artificial intelligence, of course. Mm -hmm. And then the other is based on our more than 20 years of experience. And it's uh, using optical flow and is able to calculate the three the geometry of the person in front of the camera, even using standard cameras, which normally don't have 3D information. Right. So we combine different approaches there. And this makes the system very robust and very secure, which also has been proven in our ISO certification that we have for this liveness detection technology. Interesting. Yeah. Talk a bit about data privacy and GDPR. Um, how do oh, you yeah. manage that? That's, of course, an important topic if it comes to biometrics. I know that um, it's a very important topic in the U.S. as well, but also in Germany and in Europe with GDPR. The, um, the data privacy topic, of course, is on our mind always as we're a German company. Um, so for photo verify, the nice thing is that you don't need to store anything. You can you send these pictures, but then 
we would just say, yes, this is the same person or no, it's not the same person. We don't know whom we authenticate. We don't know um, in that minute, we don't store any data and we will delete everything afterwards. So it's a one-time process. You only send the images and they are there for a few seconds to be analyzed and then everything would be deleted because we don't need this information. Right. And you um, or your, the company only wants to know this document really belongs to the person. The identity has been verified. Um, but yeah, we don't need any additional information. So having minimal um, a minimal amount of data is one thing, then not storing the data, of course. And we have dedicated data centers. So for U.S. customers, we have U.S. data centers, meaning mm -hmm. the the data would stay in the in the U.S. Right. And for European data for European customers, of course, we have European data centers and so on. So we are taking care of data data privacy on different levels. Fantastic. Yeah. So with with all that, so you know, how is this priced? I mean, how do how does somebody buy Photo Verify from you? Yeah. Yeah. So what you saw is that we need three images to do this mm -hmm. identity verification. Mm -hmm. And per se, our um, business model is a paper process sample. So if you send three okay. samples, we would um, count those. And um, this is how it's Price. So it's not a per user pricing. Okay. Um, it's not a license that you you have, but it's more like what you really use will will be priced in the end. So okay. yeah. So consumption per based. Authentication time. It's consumption based. It's per authentication. Yeah. Right. Right. So if you had you know ten thousand uh, identities in your database and they were sitting idle, not using Photo Verify, uh, they they wouldn't you wouldn't be charged for them. No, it's no just what you actually consume yeah, as a that's company. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, uh, that's a true measure of the cost. Well, thank you very much, Anne Catherine. You've been uh, been very helpful in helping us to understand a little bit more about Photo Verify. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, we'll be including integration with BioID. Uh, not necessarily Photo Verify, but uh, if you ask for it, perhaps we'll add it to Glue Solo. And uh, we'll look forward to, um, to hearing from you and your questions. And with that, I'll sign off. Yeah, thank you.